Hello everyone, hi uh, and welcome you all on Physics Adhin. So in our last video, we have started about photoelectric effect and uh, analyze some of the experiment uh, experimental setup. And in this video, we are going to uh, hear what was the experimental observation. And in the same time, we will be also looking for classical theory failure. So what were the points that classical theory suggest and that contradicts the experimental observation. So that's how we are going to proceed in this video. So let me uh, rephrase uh, those parameters that we are going to tune. So parameters or better way to write it as tuning parameters. So let me put it here. Tuning parameters. So tuning parameter means what uh, like we will change the tune which parameters to get some different results. So first is uh, let's say the intensity of the source. In intensity of source, I will write it as I. The second is the frequency of the source. Frequency of source. Uh, I will write as mu or some uh, omega you can write uh, the mu is fine. Okay. Third is uh, my voltage, applied voltage source, applied voltage V. Okay, so now uh, since this is a variable, so let me put a sign of this. So it means that this is a variable DC source. This is an emitter, emitter and this here something that is called source or light which has intensity i and frequency mu so we are going to tune these i nu and v and see some different uh, observations so let's start the first observation that you can say is this so what you can do you can so let me write it over here the fixed parameters what are they the fixed parameters are intensity and the voltage and what we are the variable parameter is your frequency mu so let's read it so there is a minimum frequency mu naught below which there will be no emission of photoelectrons this minimum frequency is known as threshold frequency and it depends upon the nature of the metallic surface so uh, there is a concept of threshold frequency what is that that is a minimum frequency below which there is no emission of photoelectrons and it depends upon the metal surface nature of the metallic surface so that was few important points so first okay let me not rewrite it so it's the threshold frequency mu naught so what was the classical uh, ex classical failure over here in this experiment classical failure was the classical theory suggest there should not be any such concept of threshold frequency so classical theory suggest whatever incident light how low it is there will be an emission of photoelectrons. Okay. Uh, and the second most important is it depends upon the nature of the metal surface. It means if you change this material surface, if you change this material of this cathode, then this mu the value of the mu naught will change. So this was also observed here. So this was the first uh, experimental observation that there exist a threshold frequency which classical theory suggests that there should be no concept so this was the first uh, experimental observation let's move on to the second experimental observation first let me read it and then i will explain that above the threshold frequency mu naught the kinetic energy or the velocity of the emitted photoelectrons depends on the frequency of the incident light not on the intensity so mark these points frequency of the incident light not on the intensity what does it depend the kinetic energy so 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 the tuning parameter the voltage v is fixed okay your mu is for a particular mu is fixed and you are varying the intensity i is varied 
so what experiment you are performing you are at frequency mu1 which is greater than mu0 you are varying this intensity up to some value for another frequency mu2 you are which is above the threshold and let's consider that mu2 is greater than mu1 you are again scanning this intensity so the variation of this the variation of this intensity does not make any change in velocity of photoelectrons in velocity of photoelectrons okay where does the variation come from here if you change from mu1 to mu2 then then only that the velocity of the photoelectrons will change otherwise it is not going to be changed it means that the velocity or the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons depends upon this frequency not on the intensity but where the classical failure lies is here classical failure classical theory suggests that the velocity of photoelectrons of photo to electrons depends upon intensity depends upon intensity this was the classical theory which is suggest but in experiments we found it's contradictory so from the same experiment one can conclude one more thing which is this like we have varied this frequency and uh, from mu1 we have scanned the entire range of intensity i from then change the frequency of the source and again varied the intensity of that source and we have concluded okay there is no change in uh, velocity of photoelectrons if we increase the intensity or decrease the intensity for fixed value of mu but there is a change in number of photoelectrons change in number of photoelectrons emitted photoelectrons emitted and this is nothing but our third experimental observation which is here so let me read it at a fixed frequency the incident light uh, at the fixed frequency of the incident light the number of the emitted photoelectrons is directly proportional to the intensity of the incident light so number of emitted photoelectrons is proportional to the intensity of the incident light so from this same setup you can conclude this also from this whole setup you can con conclude two things first the velocity depends upon the frequency and second the uh, the number of photoelectron depends upon the intensity of the source okay so this was our second and third experimental observation now let's move on to the fourth experimental observation so uh, here is our fourth experimental observation what is suggest let read uh, the emission process of the photoelectrons are instantaneous in nature remember this that means no significant time gap so remember this time gap or the significant time gap between the arrival of the incident light on the metal surface and the emission of the photoelectrons so it means so suppose here we have this cathode and there is some light incident on it and it emits some primary electrons so this the incidence of light on this cathode and the emission of the photoelectrons doesn't have a significant time gap and this uh, significant time gap we also called as uh, the same thing as instantaneous in nature which suggests that the time of this gap is in the order of 10 raised to power minus 9 seconds so this process happens in a very short interval of time and uh, here is its classical failure so classical uh, theory does not uh, allow this instantaneous process of nature because uh, okay let's see a number because if we see a number that will be more appropriate for you so suppose i have a metal surface so this is a metal surface and i have a point source of light so let's write at psl that is a point source of light so we have this uh, and which has total energy e not in this some uh, spherical coordinates wavefront 
so it has a uh, energy e not in it okay now what fraction of this energy is incident on this metal surface so this i can allow okay only this much fraction of this energy is incident on this metal surface so that is fraction of energy of e not incident on metal surface incident on metal surface okay so uh, let's take an example of a sodium met sodium surface from sodium surface to emit an uh, photoelectron we need an energy of around few electron volts so energy required is in the order of few electron volts okay and this energy can be uh, taken from a source which has an intensity of 10 raised to power 6 watt per meter square now suppose we have a sodium surface which is a uh, one atom like a monolayer thick so it is one atom atom or monolayer monolayer of sodium atom which has an area of let's say 1 meter square the number of total atoms in it let's say are in the order of 10 raised to power minus sorry 10 raised to power 19 atoms in it so if we incident this much of intensity to this much number of atoms so each atom will receive an energy each atom will receive an energy of order of 10 raised to power uh, minus 25 watt like per unit area because i have taken per unit area so the energy or the power that it will receive is in the order of 10 raised to power minus 25 so it will take so for each atom it will take 10 raised to power minus 25 watt of energy then this this few electron volt energy to uh, to get an energy of few electron volts for that particular atom this will take around a month so classical theory suggests okay if we have a monolayer of sodium surface then it will take few electron volts of energy to uh, get uh, to uh, to produce a photoelectron so if we take this source 10 raised to power minus 6 watt per meter square source which are which has around 10 raised to power 19 atoms and a surface of 1 meter square then it will take around a month to produce uh, this photoelectrons but if we do the experiment with this source then it will take an order of 10 raised to power minus 9 second what we have seen experimentally so this was a contradiction between the experimental and the classical theory so now in this video we have uh, studied about uh, the experimental observations and its classical failure so uh, in next video we will be studying einstein hypothesis and try to explain uh, these experimental observations from that particular theory and let's see whether it fits with experimental observations or not and we will also be studying some graphical analysis by using uh, by by using these parameters that are photonic uh, photoelectric current potentials intensity frequency and all and those uh, work as can be considered to be important topics for your competitive exams because they might ask for to plot or identify the graphs between some para between some parameters okay so see you in the next video Hey thank you very much for watching this video if you like the content give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe the channel the link is over here make sure you write a comment below in the comment box and share it with your friends thank you very much for watching this video and we will see you in the next video take care bye bye